Hey y'all, I'm Monica from The New Adventure, and today I'm gonna be sharing with you everything you're gonna need to know before you bring home your new puppy. So here we go. So here on The New Adventure, we are all about golden doodles. We actually breed F1B golden doodles here on our farm. This list I'm putting together is actually for my puppy buyers, but I thought you guys that also watch the channel um, would appreciate it as well, because I know that no matter what kind of puppy you're looking at or what kind of puppy you're wanting to get, the items that you'll need are pretty much the same. I think we personally have the sweetest puppies ever, but that's just my personal opinion. So when you get your puppy, you should also get a certificate from the breeder that shows what shots they've had, what type of um, vaccines, dewormer, things like that that they've had. And then I would recommend, if you're not already established with a good veterinarian, then I would look for one in your area and go ahead and kind of know who you want to take your puppy to whenever you do get your puppy. Most puppies, you will get them about six to eight weeks and they should have their first set of vaccines, but that does not mean that they're immune to everything. I do not recommend taking your brand new puppy to PetSmart or to a dog park or anywhere where there's going to be a lot of other dogs around until they have finished their vaccines because some of the things between dogs can be very contagious and to a puppy this size a brand new one it can be very dangerous so just keep that in mind wait i know it's fun to take them to the parks and fun to show them off but i just would say for their health and just for your sanity don't do it isn't that right wally yeah yeah, death white. The other thing with health that I would recommend is make sure that you know what types of food the puppy has already been eating and try to get the same exact food. And if you want to switch them later, I would transition them slowly so as to not upset their little sensitive little stomachs. So I'm going to start our puppies on the Taste of the Wild Pacific Stream puppy recipe with smoked salmon and grain-free diet. I do keep our dogs on a grain-free diet and our vet recommends a salmon recipe rather than chicken or beef. They say that it can cause skin allergies. So, who knew, right? She likes to be held like a baby. Since our puppies don't have their teeth in yet, I'm gonna put the food through a food processor and then I'm gonna mix it with some water and let it soften. And then we will give them their first taste of the wild. Taste first like taste of the wild. wild. Oh, well. I'm just a chef, a dog chef these days. Looks like you got a couple happy customers. <laughs> They've been trying to eat the food. Oh, look at him. The other ones are here, Mom. He was ready to eat. Let me get some of that food. Teddy. Hey, little boy. Hey, Teddy. So I get a lot of questions about what type of dog bowls do I recommend. Um, for our breed, for the Golden Doodles, you do not have to have an elevated dog bowl, but check with your breeder on that. Some you do. I know Great Danes, Boxers, things like that. It's better for them to have an elevated surface to eat from. Ours, you do not have to. Um, let me show you what bowls I use for my dog. These are very simple. I don't get fancy with the dog bowls because I know they get dirty and I like to have something I can actually throw in the dishwasher. They have these rubbery bottoms on them so they don't slide around on the floor when they're eating. Um, but yeah, I would get something about this size. So when they're babies, I try to feed them about three times a day, uh, morning, noon, and night. And then um, and whenever they grow a little bit more, you stretch them out to about two times a day. And now my dogs kind of free feed. I leave bowls of food out all day and they just kind of graze. So I know I've mentioned it before on the channel, but for water, for a golden doodle or any kind of dog that loves water, I would not get a huge bowl. And the reason is they will play in it. And we made the mistake of getting the refillable water for Maggie when she was a puppy. It was a great idea, we thought. But she emptied the entire thing in the house. So just be careful of that. You will have to refill their water bowl a good bit, but it's better than having a huge mess in your house. So one other thing I do for ours is I put like a little mat underneath so that if they do play in the water or food gets spilled, it's not that big of a deal. Um, and we do just use dry food for our dogs. Um, and if they get a table scrap, it's gonna be meat only. Um, we try to keep them off of grain and we try not to feed them from the table because then it becomes 
These dogs are good at begging anyway, and it will just become a big deal if you start feeding them from the table. Before I forget to mention it, so if you're bringing in a new puppy into your home, I want you to look inside your home, all of your house plants that you may have, and just look them up and see if they could be potentially toxic to your dog. I know the peace lily is, um, and there are several other house plants that are, and if they have a chance to chew on those leaves, it could make them very sick. Also, when you're taking them outside, be sure and look at the plants that they're gonna be around and they could potentially chew on. Tomato plants are poisonous to dogs, and there are many other ones, so you just really want to pay attention to what they're gonna be gnawing on and teething on and make sure it could not be potentially harmful to them. So one other thing I'm going to highly recommend is a good sturdy dog crate. So when you get these guys, they're pretty small, but just remember they're going to grow a ton and you're going to want a crate that's going to grow with them. The kind of crate that we've always used is adjustable so that you can start them out in it and then you can grow with them so you're not having to buy new crates. It seems huge at first and you think, we'll never use all this space, but then eventually you do. You want to start with the crate just big enough for the dog to stand up and lay down and turn around. You don't want it any bigger than that because the more room they have to move around in there, they'll find a place to use the bathroom and they won't learn to hold it. So you don't want to leave a puppy in very long in the crate while they're so small. Start with just a couple of hours. And another thing that I would recommend doing is feeding your puppy in the crate at first, putting toys in there um, to play with and just leave that door open so the puppy feels comfortable going in and out. So these little fellas are going to be doing a ton of teething over the next couple of months. So I'm going to leave a link up above for you guys to click on um, and so you can go and watch my other video that I've already done on toys that we recommend. Really quick tip though is um, the antlers and natural bones work really good for dogs. Um, they seem to last a lot longer. One more quick chew toy recommendation are these Nyla bones. These come in a variety of sizes and flavors. These are just the really small ones for the puppies now while they're just now starting to chew on things. Um, something like this that they're not going to be able to break off a piece and get it lodged in their throat is a really good choice for something for them to teeth on. I don't really recommend pee pee pads when you're trying to housebreak a dog. I feel like it makes them really confused about, you know, if they can go to the bathroom over here on the inside, why can't they go to the bathroom over here on this nice soft rug? If you're going to be taking them on walks, let me recommend something to you that our trainer recommended to us. It's called a pinch collar, and I'll leave a link to this as well. It is not a spike collar. These are blunted, they do not spike your dog, but they do put a little bit of pressure whenever they try to pull so that they don't pull as hard. If they pull really hard whenever you're walking them, they can actually collapse their trachea. So you wanna do something like this so that they won't pull really hard. It might pinch them just a little and they'll let off. That's a lot better than them actually doing permanent damage to their neck. Try it, see what you think, but <clears throat> are you eating my hair? Are you eating my face? Oh my goodness, you're so sweet. So I would not invest a whole lot in collars while they're small because they're gonna grow a lot. Um, I'll leave some links down below for you to look through for different types of collars. But once they get to their full adult size, I would recommend this just for walking. We do not leave it on the dogs. We actually leave it attached to the leash and we just clip it on when we go for a walk. Um, and the leash that we use, <laughs> stick it with me. The leash that we use, I don't actually like the retractable ones for a larger dog because if they can get any momentum and then they get to the end of that lead, it can yank it right out of your hand. And then if there's a car coming by or another dog, someone could get hurt. So just something really nice and sturdy that you can hold on to. Those of you that are getting one of our puppies, I hope you really expect them to be spoiled rotten because they are going to be. And um, yeah, they're going to be snugglers because we have snuggled them every single day. They've had so much attention. So I definitely recommend going ahead and get your puppy used to being brushed. There are two types of brushes that we use at our house. We use this type, which is just a wire brush. Super simple, it's kind of soft. They don't mind it. Um, and just start kind of gently brushing them. It almost feels like their mom licking them, so they'll probably like it. I also recommend a metal comb. This will help you remove any mats and tangles before they get too bad and you have to have them cut out. So this is really, their hair's not quite long enough for this yet. I'm just kind of showing you, but yeah. It has some Maggie hair in it. This is <laughs> this is Maggie's uh, comb. 
So as far as finding a good groomer in your area, if you have a long-haired breed, I would recommend asking your friends and neighbors uh, who they recommend. Maybe look online, read Google reviews, um, and then look at their dogs. If they have a good haircut, hey, ask them where they... That's how we found our groomer. We saw a dog that we loved its haircut, and we asked where they took it, and um, yeah, that's how we found our person, because nobody likes a bad haircut. When you bring home a new puppy, there's going to be a lot of training. You're going to have some nights where they're not going to be too happy. They're going to be sad. They're going to miss their puppy friends, but they will get adjusted. They will bond with your family. Just keep working at it and don't give up. They're so worth it. Well, we know that it is a huge decision to bring a new puppy into your home, and we are happy for you guys that are on that journey. Um, I thank you so much for spending some time with me today, and I hope this list helped you and your family to make some decisions along the way. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, and we will see you next week on The New Adventure.